Um, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Daily Coaching. Um, at the moment, we're currently doing a number of online uh, web video calls um, with people within the industry um, and talking about a range of different topics. Um, so today, we're going to be looking at coaching abroad. Um, and with us talking today is going to be Andy Hill. Um, so what I'll do is I'll let Andy Hill explain a little bit about himself um, and his background um, before we actually start going into the topic. So first of all, hello, Andy. Hi, Dave. How you doing? You all right? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Good. Well, thank you, obviously, for joining me today. Um, so, yeah, if you just want to start off by basically explaining a little bit about who you are um, and your background to um, bring you to today, really. Sure. Um, well, yeah, thank, thanks for having me, mate. Um, Andy Hill, as David says, um, been coaching, uh, coaching background for the last, it's almost stretching 15 years now. Um, Grew up playing like everyone else. I've tried my hand at a lot of things, refereeing for for a period of time, and then uh, really found my enjoyment in coaching. And across that 15 years up to now, a whole range of uh, experiences, voluntary paid jobs, um, you know, one-off events, you know, around the world. For, for different things and uh, mainly started in school work from more of a multi-sports background and with some club based both grassroots and elite being like the part-time or volunteering in, in the evenings or the weekends and just building it up from there so um, still Thinking back now, still doing lots of school work. Current role is actually based in a school, although more so around specifically football and the program. Um, but there's still that element of, um, if you like, curriculum-based learning. And uh, through the coaching, I've moved into education roles as well, uh, tutoring roles, coach education, and something that I'm really enjoying uh, learning along the way. And, um, yeah, just, just kind of lo lots of roles that, as you, as you can all probably appreciate, not, no two days are the same. So I'm coaching, I'm mentoring, I'm teaching, I'm self-educating, um, and just, uh, learning along the way. So taking on new challenges just so I can figure it all out because, um, for me, there isn't a perfect way of playing the game of football or, or teaching it. And, and the more that we can learn it, the the more beneficial for us. Yeah, no, thank, thank you for that. I mean, um, you know, listen, Andy has a range of experiences and is uh, obviously very knowledgeable and, uh, you know, in terms of where he is today and in terms of what he's done in the past. And um, obviously through him showing his experiences, um, that shows. Um but also something he slightly touched on there about um, obviously, and one of the main topics of today is the coaching abroad part of it and the coaching abroad element. Um, so um, based on that, um, talk to me about your sort of coaching abroad experiences um, and some of the roles in which you've done. Um, and yeah, just to start us off. Yeah, sure. So um, first real experience of coaching abroad was, 2009 um went to america um just a, a seasonal football coaching role based in uh, new jersey uh, new york philadelphia that kind of region and um did nine month contracts out there and actually ended up being there for just shy of three years so that was my first real experience of, of being away and coaching um, actually started multi sports more so than football, and then gradually the the travel teams and the football flowed from there. Um, through roles with the football association here, and uh, most recently working for Premier League Foundation, um, traveling abroad lots of times to do coach education and like one off trips as well. So. Slightly different, but still coaching abroad because I think what the purpose of those are is you're sharing knowledge and certainly learning. I mean, I'm probably touching at one point, I've just been to a country in South America and that's given me an experience that has taught me so much and it was just a week. So um, certainly there's been a, 
a lot of my coaching background has been long term abroad, but certainly the trips in between have had just as big an impact. Okay, just just out of curiosity, which ones have you sort of? So you might not have preferred one over the other, but you know, do you, do you prefer the sort of short term ones in terms? Of, obviously, like I said, it's a bit of a different experience because obviously it's more sort of I suppose the educating and the sort of uh, sharing of ways to do things, whereas opposed to maybe your earlier experiences in say America was more so the actual foundations of the coaching and you doing that on a on a, on a delivery basis. Yeah, so I mean, the, the America one basically moulded the coach that I am. Um, part of the reason that, that journey came to an end was actually wanting to upskill myself more as a coach because I went there early in my coaching career and you're kind of given the freedom to run with it. You know, there is some coach education, there, there is some support there, but how much you get to skill your craft is on you really if you just go out and coach the same way and the same things all the time great if you actually want to educate yourself and learn then that's on you a little bit to do that so obviously a huge part of my coaching development w was there um more so working with a range of coaches from the uk because that's typically what the american model certainly was at that time it's more of a european model now i guess uh, a lot more european and British based coaches go over, but particularly British based coaches back in 2009. And uh, I think the, the biggest thing is learning the culture of how football is delivered in the country that you're in. So the longer term ones give you an opportunity to do that. I think the more experience I've had of traveling to coach, the more I take a back seat when I first get there and see what they do and listen and learn and understand the best I can. Because I think the real skill, if you're there for a long period of time or medium to long term, is to consider how you can implement your experience, what you know, and make it fit. Yeah, of course. And allow it to work best for the kids or for the adults or whoever you're coaching. Or in my case, if I'm coach educating, the coaches that coach the kids if you go in there and throw all your knowledge this is what I know I'm I'm the guy from England this is everything some people love that you know some coaches yet yeah, just show me some ideas some kids great you're you're the guy they've brought over to do it you you know loads of stuff and I think reviewing and challenging yourself to be open-minded and I I almost not challenge myself. I think naturally I pick up anything from any coach I work with, whether it's someone I'm mentoring, someone, if it's a CPD I'm going to, or um, any of the mentors of mine, I think um, I, I try to do that. So yeah, the biggest thing from being away and even in my most recent role in Europe coaching um, in the role that, that I'm undertaking at the moment, um, what we've, all these fantastic ideas because of the experience that traveling and, and, and football has given me and learned pretty quickly that, you know, you, you have to really spend time to take in the environment that you're in. I think there was an eagerness maybe to show what I knew to impress early on, to justify why I've been brought out to, to do it. Same with America. I feel there was a justification to go, yeah, I'm from England. I'm very knowledgeable and I know stuff, but I think naturally, that stuff will come across over time. That, that will come out naturally. So that, that for me, that's why the long-term ones are probably more beneficial in how they shape you holistically as a person because it really does give you, I think the shorter ones give you a little bit of a flavour, whereas you live and breathe the longer-term ones. Yeah, no, of course. Um, I, think, I think it's interesting as well because there's that big saying that, you know, football is sort of a universal language and you know depending on wherever you are everyone understands football but it's interesting like you just said there really I mean obviously going to a different country um, and especially as well like you touched on with the sort of America experiences it is often the typical thing of a lot of British coaches potentially going over to America for either the experience for um, employment opportunities within coaching as a sort of full-time base 
Um, but obviously, like you said, it's that thing of having to adapt to obviously the environment you're, you're within, the culture as well. I mean, you know, even things such as obviously America, um, you know, it's English spoken, but obviously if you're going to other countries where maybe, you know, English isn't the first language and yeah, it's fair enough to say football is a universal language which everyone can understand, but actually the first initial approach is getting past that barrier. So kind of on those points, would you say that there was any sort of real standout challenges that you fa- you found coaching abroad, uh, whether that sort of be like, the language barriers or even the distance barriers as well? Um, I mean, obviously some places are really far away from, from home. Yeah, I think language is, is massive. La- language is huge. I think something that I learned early on being in the States was I spoke too quickly. And the best way I found that out was the kids told me. And I think I've, my personality, how I am, I've always interacted pretty well. And um, with the kids that I coach in the respect that I can accept that kind of comment from a kid because I know that they'll tell you the truth. And um, so I've actually found that in coaching, my my speech has slowed down because I'm more conscious of it. Um, Language, as I said, recent trip to South America, none of the coaches spoke English and you're in their culture. And um, that was a lot around modeling and body language and signaling and that was a real amazing experience of um, that battle you have with yourself to kind of portray what you know or what you want to try and come across, but not having the mouth and to be able to do it was a real eye opener for me. Um, and then I think challenges with, with anything, I think culturally it's different. So, when I was in the States, you look at the summer months, it's extremely hot. Um, when I spent some time just north of there in Canada, um, the season is very, very short there because of the amount of snow they get and things like that. So I think back to my earlier point, you have to understand where you're going to. Um, I think I've always researched wherever I've gone before I've gone there, tried to get a flavour of the culture, the language, the people, as as best I can. But I'll be honest, there's no better substitute for actually just doing it. So I would certainly recommend that you do your research and your, your recommendations and, and, and you get the best flavour for it you can. But putting yourself out there and just doing it is um, an incredible learning experience. And one that even when I go back on short trips to different parts of the U S now, I have an open mind. I don't have a stereotype of how they're coached. Um, I have an understanding and the experience kind of guides how I pitch it and how I approach it. Um, But I'm willing to get it wrong. I'm willing to have to change it on the spot. Um, I remember going in with a session ready to go that, you know, these were elite kids. They wanted to, I realized within two minutes, they just wanted fun games, high tempo. That's all they wanted. Fun games that were high tempo. Um, and they had a good time and that was it. And that was the biggest feedback from them on, on that particular trip, that they get lots of opportunities to play football. Um, but they just, they, for the, those for that group of kids, they had a a way of what it looked like in their head that they would enjoy, and and I think it's about the people or the areas that you work in. It, you know, um, the more experiences that you can get and broaden your knowledge and put yourself out there, just out of your comfort zone. I've had enough times where I've tried stuff and the kids are looking at you or the adults are looking at you and um, that's where you're really tested. And I think if you're willing to to give that a go, I mean, I'm talking a lot about comfort zone and and stuff like that. Actually, you doing these experiences is half the battle anyway. You know, I've known a lot of coaches that have literally got to the airport and turned around, some that haven't lasted it out and completely understand it completely get it um 
So hats off to anyone that's thinking of doing something like that. But the way that the game's gone, the languages, the the world game kind of being as united as it is, I can honestly say languages would be one thing that I would go back and I'd, I'd be trying to learn more languages. Um, but I think a lot of coaches in the UK look for these opportunities now outside of the UK. And again, I was 20 years old when I first did that. And I, and I think if you can do that at a young age um, and you're willing to do it at a young age, it, it will certainly give you a, a different experience to what you used to in, in the UK. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I think I think you exactly you've hit the nail on the head there in terms of like I said, a lot of the time it's younger coaches that often tend to go abroad. And I think you know, not in all situations and all circumstances, but sometimes people kind of look at it as though, you know, I want to coach abroad. Where can I go to? Right, where's the hottest country? Where's the most glamorous place? Um, you know, where's the place places where football may be perceived as doing well? Um, and I think often people might get sort of overshadowed by those factors or those elements um, in terms of their decision making. But like you said, it's, it's finding out, you know, experiences of people may go in with their sort of football brains on, but then go into those environments. And like you said, well, actually, some of the children just just want to play. So, um, yeah, I think that that's massive in terms, of, like you said, just getting the environment right doing your research as well in terms of understanding the environment you're going into. I mean, within football as it is, whenever anybody does a session, it's, you know, understanding and knowing the kids that you're coaching. So it should be sort of a, the same sort of template taken into abroad as well. So um, I think yeah. based on what you just said there, there's nothing wrong with the motivation for the coach. Some want to seek professional opportunities. I've met through... Um, didn't mention at the beginning, but obviously studying a, a football-related course at university and met, meeting coaches that are coaching out in Europe at professional clubs, meeting younger coaches that are going and doing summer camps or seasonal coaching and um, living the lifestyle that comes with it. You know, being 20 years old going to America wasn't at university at the time, but that's kind of how it was. You worked during the day, sometimes in the evenings, coaching. And then you explored the culture and um, that, for me, I've always used the phrase that you, you put me on a football pitch anywhere in the world and I'll feel comfortable. But I think since I used that term, what's become more apparent is, yeah, you can coach on any pitch in the world because that's our comfort zone. But the more you can understand the life and soul around it and what happens around it, um, the easier it is to pitch, engage and understand the people that are in front of you, their motivations for being there. Some of them want to be professional players. Some are there just for fun, you know, the, these kind of things. So um, I think there's lots of different reasons and motivations for coaches to go abroad. And I don't think there's any that are wrong. Um, the company I went with um, in the first year at um, for America, I wasn't the first company that I looked into. I, I went to like an open event, didn't really get a feel that it was for me the first one. And then the second one, um, and I went with the attitude of, because that was my first real time away from home at that point, was let's give it a go because you can always go home. As I said, there were people that did that and you find out about yourself a little bit when you do stuff like this. And um that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, so, yeah, lots of motivations. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I, I think the more that you can learn now with the game going the way it is, I mean, you look at the States, look at how how much that's grown in, in the last 10 years. Um, it's, it's just been considerable. And, and as I said earlier, globally now, there's more coaches here, there and everywhere. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that, like you just said, I think maybe the go-to thing before was America, but now, yeah, like you said, there's so many opportunities all over, which is which is good for the game and good for, um, I suppose, opportunities for employment as well. So, yeah, massive. Um, all right, and looking kind of as it, um, kind of as a whole, um, what kind of 
benefits would you say that it's brought to you in terms of coaching abroad? Um, and also, say, for example, if some of the people who are watching um, are obviously interested in coaching abroad, what kind of steps would you say to take in terms of getting into that route or um, which ones they should choose? Yeah, so what was the biggest thing? I think the network inside of coaching abroad is just incredible. It's just incredible. Whether I've coached somewhere for a week or a month or a couple of years, I'm in touch with a lot of people now. Um, social media isn't what it was 10 years ago. It's incredible now. Um, I have a lot of conversations or follow a lot of streams or whatever of people that I've come across or had one conversation with, one coaching session with in the past and just seeing what they're doing. So being connected in that way, I just think is the most valuable thing. Using the platforms that we have available to us now that, that weren't there before, you know, sharing session plans on social media, um, streaming, things like what we're doing now, very, very limited before. So I think building the experiences and the connections. I've sat in rooms, uh, at interviews, I've sat in rooms at coaching conferences and the person across the room was someone that I happened to bump into once in South America. And all of a sudden you, you sit there and you're talking football. And it's those connections that football just gives you. And I think that would certainly be the biggest thing. The other motivation is to obviously grow your skill set, grow your experience. I think some coaches are very clear. Uh, one example being that they they want to coach in a pro game and they're going to go through the processes of whatever that looks like to do that or in academies here, and which is a, a fantastic pathway if, if you have the opportunity to, to follow it through. But I think coaching and successful coaching in – this country the word successful is dependent on what the person setting out to do yeah, so course. my advice and the thing that I learned was you know I've worked in academies now some 10 years after going to America so I never had a distinct plan I'm going to do this then I'm going to do that and it's going to lead to this because the connections and other things uh, my first experience actually in an elite environment was a coach that I'd never met and I was on a youth module course with called me up two months later and said I've got an opportunity would you be interested I spent four days with him on a course that that was it so th there's that but um the steps to take I think you know I don't want to just confuse it with this just being about young coaches. You know, when I was in America, there was a gentleman in his mid thirties who we live with, who, who was coaching. And you know, I've just taken um, in the last year or so, you know, I'm in my thirties now as well. So I think the age side of it isn't really a factor. I think the steps you need to take is understand what you want to get out of it understand why you're doing it what's the purpose is it a career path is it a lifestyle thing if i had a choice could would i set up in america absolutely unbelievable place to live really enjoyed it 10 years ago but all the experiences and stuff i have now would it be the same i don't know um but i'd certainly say that understanding why 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 you want to go um I'd say as well, talking to people, research, research is so important, that those steps, um, because what works for one person may or may not work for you. I think we all, let's say I decided I wanted to go and coach in America and I'd never done it before. If I get one person's perception, I'm, go, I'm basing it off of that person's perception and, and their, what their goal was and what they wanted to get out of it may be completely different to what it was for yourself um i think it's circumstances as well i think if you're at university and you have the summer i think that's a fantastic opportunity to explore um as i say it used to be mainly the us but now worldwide there's opportunities for university students to take on placements and 
roles over the summer. So I think from that perspective, an opportunity to travel, see the world. Um, because the bit I probably haven't touched on, all the, it grows you as a person significantly. Like, of I realised the other day, I've not been to as many countries as I thought I had compared to certainly some friends and, and colleagues, etc. But those experiences are, are completely different and some have been brilliant. Some have been eye-opening, very eye-opening. And uh, ask questions, ask questions, you know, get in touch with companies, um, teams, organisations. I think even in the UK, if you spoke to the FA or your county FA, et cetera, I'm sure there's pathways there for, or links or people that would have links to international opportunities because it's just growing now. More, more and more people are doing it. So those would be my, my main tips in terms of, uh, sorry, our main steps in terms of what to take. Because I remember the America one happened quite quickly for me. I went to a selection day. I had a phone interview. I went to a selection day. I got accepted, did all the paperwork they asked me to do. That was around the first conversation was in the November. In the March, I was gone. So you're looking at a three-month turnaround, which is um, fantastic. So, yeah, that, those would be my main points. Okay, no, fantastic. I think you've, Again, major point you just made there that, you know, even if, say, for example, I mean, typically we think of coaching abroad as, you know, long, long term employment um, or, you know, uh, a full time job out there. But crucial points that you just made in terms of the whole thing of, you know, university placements um, going out there on these short term contracts as well, these three months or, or six months ones um, and almost getting a little bit of a taster for it. Um, and seeing sort of putting your feet in the water almost testing out you know is this something for me can I can I see myself doing this potentially on, on a longer term basis and obviously somebody like yourself who has so much experience abroad like you said you've done a range of things you've done the the one day as you've done the um, month month long ones you've done the you know obviously more currently full-time employment abroad as well so um, I mean, that was, like I said, one of the main reasons why I wanted to get you on here today, just because I think you have such a vast experience of coaching abroad and the insight in terms of your experiences, some challenges which you may face, but let's be honest, there's challenges which you face as a coach over here as well. Um, but just kind of highlighting it to an extent um, and obviously, yeah, the benefits as well. So, yeah. I think the, the one thing I would say as well, which I probably haven't touched on, is the cultures are very different. So my most recent uh, job in, in Europe wasn't the easiest to settle into life outside of the workplace, you know, language being different, um, just general culture and how people live. And um, if you didn't speak the language, it was very difficult. And something that didn't phase me, hasn't phased me, wouldn't say that I fully settled in yet either. Um, but a little bit of that's on me to to do more to to do that. I've put a lot of my time and effort into the coaching side when I'm at the school, which is fantastic. When you're outside of it, it's as useful as you want, as much as you want to apply yourself to it. And then finally, the other point being um, the purpose of why you might want to do stuff may change. If I think about that first experience in the U S there's many coaches that are now coaching here, both grassroots and professionally. There's people that are no longer coaching, but they're now living in America. They, they enjoyed the culture and they've made a career and do a little bit of football on the side, or they don't do football at all anymore, or they have a family now and, and, and these kind of things. So I think the beauty of coaching abroad is it's not one size fits all. There's not one positive. There's not just one single reason why you would do it. And as I said, there's more and more opportunities now where coaches can go out and 
whether it's at pro clubs, companies, grassroots clubs, whatever it may be. And some of the best decisions that I made, you, you know, the reason I went out to America in the first place is because I was 18, 19 coaching here very early in my, my coaching career and just decided, you know, what's out there? Let's, let, let's, let's give something else a go. And on reflection now, I can smile about it and realise I was a rabbit in headlights. I made a lot of mistakes. Um, both coaching, I mean, even silly mistakes like the language you use. You know, for mm. anyone that's listening that's coached in America, the kids will have, will pick up on you pretty quickly if you, you're using English terminology such as bibs or trainers or... Um, Cleats. Boots, cleats, exactly. So, um, so some light-hearted ones like that, and and some bigger ones. Because again, culturally, you you got to learn the law. You got to learn the the way that people live, the way that um, society kind of runs there. Um, same for being in Europe now, um, le- learning how that is, and that's completely different as well. So. I don't now think what's my next move, where do I go next? It has to be here, it has to be there. I think the wonderful thing about being in football and doing what we do is these things come up. Yeah. The America thing was more me looking into it and deciding I wanted to go. The one that I'm doing recently now came out of the blue and I thought, yeah, do you know what? That that sounds like something I could could could, could get stuck into. So as much as we're talking about steps and applying for stuff, I think just being out there, being active um coaching regularly doing what you're doing and through those connections through things that you see because actually if I wasn't in my previous role I wouldn't have come across the role that I'm now in so that's been a huge huge part of my international experience fantastic um I think first of all I just obviously want to say <clears throat> thank you for obviously taking part of in this um I'm hoping that you know people are watching you know you've had a range of different experiences I mean like I said somebody like Andy who's been you know across the pond literally in terms of Europe um, America um, and Asia as well you know it's really looking at those different experiences molding it to yourself and giving it a chance so yeah great insight so yeah Andy obviously thank you for taking part um, no massively appreciate it. Um, if you just want to share some of your socials so that people can get in touch and maybe ask you more questions on it if you want to. Absolutely. Yeah, no, th- thanks for having me. I think, um, especially in the current times that we're in, stuff sharing experiences and building these contacts and connections is uh, certainly at the top of my list and would be highly recommended. So the, the main one that I use is, is Twitter. So my handle on Twitter is at Andy Hilsey, so at A N D Y H I L L S Y, um, and and you'll actually see on there I do a lot of um, sharing of well, not so much sharing my own content, but just endorsing others, sharing stuff, asking qu- football related questions. So please feel free to get in touch um, and connect. And if I can ask, if you've got any questions at all about moving abroad again I can give you my experiences and my thoughts and signposts uh, and then it's it's up to you guys to uh, find what works for you so um, please get in touch and good luck to anyone that, that is thinking or planning to uh, coach abroad in the near future no problem thank you very much for Andy um, I'll put um, your uh, social handle as well in the um, description as well so that people can obviously go through that too um, but yeah, definitely highly recommend you get in touch with Andy. Like I said, vast experiences, not only abroad, um, obviously this is what the topic was on today, but also um, within the UK as well. So yeah, but um, okay, well, to the next one. Um, Andy, thank you for taking part again um, and we'll catch up soon. Thanks for having me. Cheers, Dave. No worries.